Hi everyone, this is Lomi, and today I'm sharing the process for painting Rune's fantasy parts. First things first, the heavily modified parts need to be coated with primer. For this I use Rust-Oleum Sandable Automotive Primer. Every time I mention this, people ask if I'm sure it's safe for resin. The answer is yes, absolutely! Cars are more than just metal. They also have fiberglass, plastic, and resin parts, and this is safe for all of them. Just be aware that it will not come off with acetone or brush cleaner alone. The only way to remove it is to sand it off, so it's very permanent. I'll be coating the tops of the leg parts with acrylic paint. I've mixed this as a pretty good match to the doll's resin. This video is already really long, so I'll cover information on mixing a color match in another video. The first step is pretty simple, just airbrushing color onto the top one third or so of the legs. I'm working outside because I'm using Tamiya acrylics, which have some fumes I don't want in my house. The finished result is a little more yellow than the resin, but since it'll be blushed as well and the top will be covered with suede to aid posing, it shouldn't show. I hadn't used Tamiya acrylics before, so now I'll know to double check my color matches. After the acrylics have had several days to dry, I use painter's tape to mask off the top. I use torn edges of tape to give a rough and uneven line since that's the sort of transition to scales Rune has. Then I start adding a dark green acrylic paint base coat. There's a lot to do, so even sped up, I can't show you everything. The first time I cut this video together, I tried, and it was more than half an hour long. So instead, I'll just show you as much as I can of each part. Airbrushing is only quick for things like face-ups. When working on a big project like this, it takes a lot of patience, and you can see how long it takes by watching the way the sunlight creeps up from the window. Just laying down the base color takes several hours and many, many coats for even coverage. Fortunately, since I'm going to be adding scales on top of this, it doesn't need to be perfectly even. A little blotchiness and color variation here will actually help me make it look better. After sealing his arms, I mask them the same way. I use my hand and a piece of cloth to cover the part I want to remain regular skin. The sealant doesn't have as much tooth as the primer, so I have to stop and let the paint dry more often. The same goes for his forearms. Since his elbow pieces were sculpted from epoxy and bondo putty, I used primer on them as well. And since his hands are custom cast white resin that turned out really slick, I used primer on them to add extra tooth and texture to make the painting easier. His feet had some staining I couldn't remove, so I went ahead and put primer on them too. This whole process took about 3 ounces of custom mixed and thinned paint, and even then I ran out before I had as much coverage on the feet as I really wanted.
Once the base coat is on all his parts, it's time to add the scales. To get the pattern, I use fishnet pantyhose pulled over the parts. This creates a perfect stencil. I use bright lime green acrylic paint over the mesh. The color won't be nearly so bright when layered over the dark base, but it lets me work faster than if I were to use a more subtle color. It also lets me make the scales brighter on high points. Once the scales are dry, I can go ahead and remove the painter's tape and see how the finished product looks. Painting scales on his feet was a challenge since I had to hold the mesh in between the toes and around the curves, trying not to smudge the wet paint. It also gave me a real challenge trying to get the pattern of the mesh aligned to make smooth transitions. When all the airbrushing on his limbs is done, I coat them in Purity Seal and add blushing with pastels. I use warm peaches for the flesh parts, and bright turquoise for the veins on his upper arms. For the blushing on the scales, I use black. I blush these veins with black too. There are story reasons for that, but it's too much to explain here. When I put the base coat of paint on his hands, I noticed a flaw I needed to fix, so they ended up being painted last of all. Adding the scales on the hands was very difficult, since I had to fit the mesh around each individual finger and work from a lot of different angles. I think this was the most difficult out of everything I've done so far.
I'd do something slightly different with his hands too, adding some highlights on the knuckles with the airbrush. I've never used my airbrush for blushing, so it was a fun experiment for me. Then I add shadows with black pastel. His claws get a quick coat of acrylic paint, then blushed with shades of black and gray. With all the different layers of paint, drying times, and days waiting for weather dry enough to spray sealant, it took me six weeks to get the painting and blushing done. I hope I never have to do this again, so that calls for one more, rather dramatic step. To make the paint job as permanent as possible, I coat his painted parts in UV Cure Clear Polyester Resin. It's extremely glossy, but spraying matte sealant over the parts will reduce the shine. The weather here is too humid for spray sealants right now, so it might be a week or two before I can give them their final coat. Overall though, this means the hardest part of his project is finally done. I had hoped to have him ready to assemble by the time I made this video, but I didn't expect it to take so long to do the painting and blushing. I still need to suede his joints before he can stand, so I'm not quite there yet. He'll be together in time for the next step though, which is making his jacket. Thanks for watching, and hope to see you then!